Oxford dictionaries named selfie as the word of 2013. The word selfie, taking a picture of yourself, was defined as a photo of yourself that you take typically with a smartphone or a webcam that you usually post on social media. There's even a malady, a sickness, an illness called selfititis. Selfititis is an obsessive compulsive desire to take photos of oneself and post them on social media. Many members of our church are stricken with that affliction. 92 million selfies are taken every day. As of 9.22 o'clock last night, 468,318,108 selfies are posted on Instagram. Take out your phone right now. I know you got it. Take it out. Come on. Come on. I'm going to give you a minute to get to your camera. Take out your phone. Everybody here with your, with your cell phone, with your smartphone, or with your Android, with your iPhone, everybody here who has one, take it out right now. This is the only time you will do this in this church. <laughs> but I need for you to do this this morning because it's necessary for me to make this little point. You got it? Get to your camera. I know you're there. You got it? Everybody take a selfie right now. You did it? Now, that selfie is what you say you look like. But let me tell you what God says you look like. This selfie, you have to get the right angle, and you got to crop it, and you got to airbrush it. Somebody ought to help me preach here. And you got to turn it and twist it and make sure, and then you have taken 15 before you get the right one. But we are his workmanship. I wish I had a witness here. Created in Christ Jesus. And it does not matter what your smartphone says. You are what God says you are. Um, this one verse. This one verse. Is about the work of grace in our lives. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. This verse, this one verse, verse 10, tells us what the Lord does in us when he saves us. And how he works through us to accomplish his will in the world. This verse is also the selfie that God has made of each and every one of his children. And the challenge, brothers and sisters, lies in the question, are we going to be the selfie on our phone or the selfie that God put in verse 10? 
Because with God, we don't have to crop it. We don't have to filter it. We don't have to airbrush it. Because God sees us just the way we are, but he knows what we can become. Everybody saw Saul, but God saw Paul. Everybody saw Simon, but Jesus saw Peter. Everybody saw Abram, but God saw Abraham. Everybody saw Jacob, but God saw Israel. Because God does not look at your outward appearance. God does not have to crop you. or, or God does not have to airbrush you. God does not have to angle and twist you. He knows what you will become because you are his workmanship. Walk with me around the text. The word workmanship means that which is made a work of art. It comes from the Greek word for our English word poem. We are God's poem. And the word refers to a, a piece of literary workmanship. The word workmanship literally means masterpiece. You are God's masterpiece. You are God's magnum opus. You are the best thing God ever created. You are the best you God will ever create. There will never be another you. You, by yourself, are a masterpiece. Shakespeare said, what a piece of work is man. How noble in reason. How infinite in faculty. In form, in movement, how express how admirable in apprehension how like an angel in knowledge how like a god david says uh in in psalm number eight what is man that you're so mindful of him and the son of man that you would even visit him you've made him a little lower than the angels and you have crowned him with glory and honor the redeemed, those of us in here this morning who have been redeemed are God's masterpiece. His greatest achievement, the greatest work of the master potter, the greatest letter ever written by the master author. We are saved because he took a shapeless, dead piece of clay put it in his powerful hand and molded it into something beautiful for his own glory. Nobody is a mistake. Nobody is an accident. Nobody was born when they were not supposed to be born. God let every one of us be born as a masterpiece. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. And brothers and sisters, when you stop to think about the raw materials God had to use, when you stop to think about the raw material that God had to use when he saved sinners like us, it ought to change our attitude when we come in here. Because everybody ought to come in here with their attitude if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side. 
If you're sitting by some proud people who can't open their mouth and some people who act like they don't know who it was God who kept them, you got my permission right now to go sit down next to a crook just like you who know that if the Lord didn't save me, The redeemed, the redeemed, listen, 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 shh, listen. Because you can't listen hollering, you got to listen right here. The redeemed are God's love letter to a lost and dying world. The only Bible sinners read is your life. St. Francis of Assisi says, go everywhere preaching. And if necessary, use words. Listen, you cannot out-preach your life. You can't out-teach your life. You can't out-sing your life. You can't out-pray your life. Your life speaks louder than your sermon. Talk back to me if you can. Y'all was hollering before, now you're quiet right now. Your life is louder than all the noise you make on Sunday morning because the Lord is not concerned about how high you jump when the Spirit comes but how straight you walk when you come down. Hmm. 2 Corinthians 3, I'm about to ask you to leave with it because you're disturbing me carrying on like that. That's not the spirit of God because the spirit of God will not disturb people around you. Let me get back to what I was saying. 2 Corinthians 3, 2 through 3 says, Ye are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read of all men. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God. No artist paints to hide the painting in a closet. No sculptor sculpts to hide it away so that no one can see it. No writer pins a literary work to keep it unread. God did not save us to sequester us. But God saved us so that we can be on display for a lost and dying world. Listen, our lives are a living canvas portraying the glory of our creator and our redeemer. We are trophies of God's saving grace. The psalmist said, the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. You, you have to be a fool to look at a starry night and say there is no God. Something's wrong with you to hear a newborn baby cry and say there is no God. You got to get rid of mountains, oceans, rivers, streams, ducks, camels, elephants, hippos, snakes. Well, we can get rid of snakes. Uh, Everything that, that moves, everything that crawls, 
everything that breathes, everything that lives. God created it all and you got to get rid of all of that to say there is no God. But more than that, you got to get rid of everybody in this church because we came here this morning on purpose to declare there is a God. He walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me I am his own. I know there's a God. He woke me up this morning. I know there's a God because I can feel him burning on the altars of my heart. Um, thank you, Holy Spirit. I, I mentioned it a second ago. God did not create us to sequester us. Sometimes a jury who cannot reach a verdict right away has to be sequestered. And in their sequestration, they are examining evidence. They are going over transcripts and looking back over witness testimony. And they come out of their sequestration with a verdict after having examined the evidence. If you're going to be a strong Christian, you got to go into sequestration and examine the evidence. What did God do that I can render a verdict to say that God is good? I can take Abraham's word for it because he called him out of Ur of the Chaldees. I can take Job's word for it because Job lost everything he had but God gave him back double except his ten children. I can take David's word for it because Saul tried to kill David and the Lord spared him on every hand. I can take Ruth's word for it because she was a Moabite girl. I can take Esther's word for it. I can take Moses' word for it. I can take Daniel's word for it. I can take Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's word for it. So when I sit down with the evidence that I have in my hand, and I go over it and over it and over it and pour over it, I have to come back with a verdict, but then I can render a verdict from my own evidence. When I was lost, I wish I had a witness. When I was down, when I was sick, God came to my rescue and my verdict is, I find no fault in him. Is there anybody else here? I said, is there anybody else here? Don't take my word for it. What's, what's your verdict? What's your story? What's your testimony? What has God done in your life? I'm trying to leave it alone. But you can't shout on nobody else's testimony. You got to have your own story. Kingdom woman, you need your own testimony. Thank God for the teachers who taught on yesterday, but you ought to be able to encourage yourself. You ought to be able to talk about what God has done in your life. He brought you through a divorce. He brought you through a layoff on your job. He brought you through sickness and pain. You lost everything you had, but you're still on your feet. And here you are today, this morning, in this sanctuary. After all that you've been through, you still have joy. You still have a smile on your face. You still got somewhere to sleep tonight. That Negro thought he'd have took you all the way down. But what he was doing was piling dirt on you, kind of like that goat that was in a, in a, in a hole. This goat that was in a hole in a well and he couldn't get out and he tied a rope around him and tried to bring him up and he kept on slipping out of the rope. And so since they couldn't get the goat out of the well, they started pouring dirt on him to bury him. But the goat was smarter than the people who was pouring dirt on him because every time they poured some dirt on him, he'd pack it down. 
He'd put some more dirt on him and he'd pack it down. He'd put some more dirt on him and he'd pack it down. Until finally the dirt kept rising and rising and rising until the goat just walked out of the well because he packed down what they were pouring on him. When your enemy tries to pour it on you, just pack it down. Just pack it down and God will raise you up and prepare a table before you. In the presence of your enemy. He'll anoint your head with oil until your cup is just running over. Surely. 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 Goodness and mercy is chasing me all the days of my life. And when it's all over, he's not through blessing me because I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's workmanship. But then Paul in that same verse says, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Now brothers and sisters hear me. Good works are the fruit of salvation not the basis of it. Works do not save us, but works are a product of our salvation. The child of God will evidence a life that is occupied with deeds that reflect well on the Lord Jesus Christ. The short but highly significant phrase for good works symbolize, sisters, that you're not just kingdom women, but you're called for a purpose. Psalm 86 verse 11 says, Teach me thy way, O Lord, I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. Romans 12 and 6 says, having gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. 1 Peter 4 and 10 says, as every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. The new life he creates within us will always work its way out through us in good works. Because James says faith without works is dead. I don't care how much faith you say you have. Do you tithe? I don't care how much faith you say you have. Do you join the women's work? I don't care how much faith you say you have. Where are you on Monday night for men's ministry? Doesn't matter how much faith you have. You say you have. Have you talked to somebody lately about your faith and about joining the church and about loving Jesus Christ? Because if you say you have faith, it ought to manifest itself in good works. You don't work to be saved. You work because you've been saved. Well, pastor, you know, I can't do what I used to do and I can't do, we know people can't do a whole lot right now because of the pandemic. Look like your vaccine work everywhere but at church. Your vaccine works at TJ Maxx. Talk back to me if you can. Your vaccine works at Luby's and Papado's. 
your vaccine works at Nordstrom and Neiman Mar Marcus, but when you come to church, Pastor, I can't do what I used to do because you know the pandemic is still raging. You got to be careful. You ain't careful at the casino. Your vaccine work at the beauty shop and the nail salon. Come on to the Lord's house and put your hands to the plow. Because the scripture says, if you put your hand to the plow and look back, you're not fit for the kingdom of God. Am I doing all right? Sister, you are God's workmanship. Not your hips. Not your thighs. Not your breasts. Not your strut. Not your hair. Not your clothes. Not your nails. Not your pedicure. God loves you because of what's on the inside of you. And you may never get to lead anything. You may never be in charge of anything. You may never get your name called. But God is not looking for your outward appearance. You are his workmanship just because he made you. And there's all kinds of sisters in here. That God needs to get his hands on you. Tall ones and short ones. Skinny ones and... Other ones. Dark ones and bright ones. Smart ones and... Other one. God can get his hands on you and listen. Whatever little you bring, little becomes much. I wish I had somebody to help me preach. When you place it in the master's hand. All that little boy had was two fish. Five barley loaves. But he put it in the master's hand. You're going to help me preach this, won't you? Elijah went to that widow's house and he said, bake me a cake. She said, all I got is some flour and some meal. And me and my boy are about to eat that and die. He said, make me one first. And the Bible said her meal never ran out. Somebody ought to help me preach it. There were two men on the outside of the city. And they said, why sit we here till we die? If we go in there, we're going to die. If we stay out here, we're going to die. Let's just take our chances and go in there. And when they went in there, God sounded the sound of battle and the enemy ran away and left everything there. And those two men were able to dress themselves and eat because God can make a way. I said, God can make a way. If you just decide that you want to be used by God, God will make a way. God will move people out of your life to help you to be all the woman he wants you to be. Because there are some men who are jealous of your womanhood, if you can believe that. Listen, listen strong black woman. Don't you get intimidated by nobody who ain't strong enough to walk with you? You, you, you got all of this going for you? And then some man wants you to subjugate yourself to him for him to feel good about himself? When you get him, he better have everything going for him because you got it going on for yourself. You got your own job. You make your own money. You buy your own clothes. You buy your own car. And if you're a black woman, you say, I buy my own stuff. And you need to let him know, I love you, but I don't need you. I put up with your foolishness, but I don't have to. Because a real woman wants a real man. 
because a real woman knows her value. Her price is far above rubies. That's your workmanship. That's your work. But then finally Paul talks about your walk. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus under good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. This statement makes clear that God expects his people to walk in good works. To make full use of every opportunity. It is a fixed way of life that is committed to living the way God intends for his people to live. God intends for us to live in love, in obedience, in faithfulness, and in holiness. Bear in mind that we are all a work in progress. You missed that. That was, the, that was the only shout in this sermon. Everybody here is a work in progress. I'm not all the preacher I'm going to be. I'm not all the Christian I need to be. I'm not all the man that I ought to be. Because I am a work in progress but I have it on good authority that he which hath begun a good work in you I wish I had somebody to help me close will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ the phrase hath before ordained that we should walk in them means before we ever came to Jesus by faith God had already planned our path. God already knows who's going to come to him in faith. And so the psalmist in Psalm 37, as I hurry to the close, says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Though he stumble, he will not utterly fall because the Lord delighted in his way. Listen, brothers and sisters, when, when you know you're God's workmanship, when you are working in the kingdom like God has designed, and when you are walking in the will of God, God has a way of ordering your steps. Let me see if I can get this over to you as I try to close. God has a way of making you speak to people who've been talking about you. Because when he orders your steps, you come to realize you can't let small people stop your walk. Because you on your way somewhere. I wish I had help to close here. And since you're on your way somewhere, you can't let little people stop your progress because your steps have been ordered by the Lord. And since God has ordered your steps, why would you let somebody behind you trip you up? What you doing tripping on what's behind you? You ain't supposed to trip on what's behind you. If somebody's talking behind your back, how you going to trip over them? Somebody ought to help me preach it. If they are talking about you behind your back, they are in a perfect position. Can I say it?
Let me move on because it almost slipped out. You just keep on walking. Because your steps are ordered by the Lord. I'm glad that the Bible does not say the steps of a perfect man are ordered by the Lord. Because I would have been disqualified if the scripture had said that. But the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And then the scripture says, though he stumble, he will not utterly fall. God has a way even when you fall. Listen, God has a way of padding your fall. He'll let you fall, but he won't let you break nothing. He'll let a fall come in your life, but it's a fall that you can get up from. He'll let a fall come in your life, but it's a fall that when you get up, you can rejoice that it was nobody but the Lord. He'll let you fall, but you can go back to work tomorrow morning. He'll let you fall, but you can come to church and celebrate God's goodness. Because only people who know something about falling can shout when you stand up. I need somebody who's had some falls in your life to help me testify that he will pick you up when you fall. He will make your enemy your footstool. He will keep you from breaking anything. He will keep the world from finding you out. He will. Is there anybody here who's had some falls in your life? Come on, help me testify. If you've fallen in your life, there's some decisions you wish you hadn't made. There's some roads you wish you hadn't traveled. There's some stuff you wish you could go back and undo. There's some skeletons in your closet. That if they fell out, you'd be embarrassed this morning. But the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And though he stumble, he will not utterly fall. But you know what David says in the rest of that song. I've been young, but now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Nor his seed begging bread God will take care of you God will open doors for you God will make a way out of nowhere God will keep you from falling won't he do it won't he do it is there anybody here got your own testimony I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within. I was sinking to rise no more, but the master of the sea, he heard my despairing cry from the waters, he lifted me. Now save, save am I, love lifting me, love lifting me, have I got a witness here, if the Lord been good to you, and you're not ashamed to testify, if the Lord kept you from losing your mind, and you're not embarrassed to be a witness, why don't you tell somebody? Why don't you look at somebody? Tell them we are God's workmanship. We are God's masterpiece. We are God's love letter. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Say yeah! 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 Yeah, I know he's all right. I know he's all right. Oh, I know he's all right. He's able 
able. He's able. He's able. He's able. Have you tried it? Won't he fix it? Won't he make a way? Won't he open a door? Won't he answer prayer? Won't he dry your tears? Won't he be a mother for you? Won't he be a husband for you? Won't he be a father for you? Won't he make a way? Tell him thank you. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for all you've done for me. Thank you for the prayers you've answered. Thank you for the doors you've opened. Thank you for the ways you've made. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can't thank you enough. I can't thank him enough. Thank you. I know him. My soul is happy. I remember when I was down in the hospital. They said he'd only lived two hours. Here I am this morning in the Lily Grove pulpit singing, Can't nobody do me like Jesus. And they said if he lives, he will have to be a vegetable in a nursing home for the rest of his life. Here I am. In my right mind, testifying, he will be a doctor for you. He will be a lawyer for you. He will be a friend for you. Tell him thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know you. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. 